Hi, I'm James with Curious, and I'm here with Timon from Techland Games, and we're here to check out Dying Light. So, Dying Light is a cooperative zombie survival game uh, with an emphasis on melee and free running and stuff like that. It's a very visceral experience, but what would you say separates uh, Dying Light from previous kind of zombie survival games? Uh, I think th th there are two things that are really important. The first one is the natural movement. Uh, it's a system that we've developed that gives you unprecedented freedom in traversing the environment. So you are really free to go wherever you like. Uh, and if it's, you see something that's within your reach, it, it really is within your reach in our game. You can reach it, grab it, climb on top of it, and that helps you escape zombies. And the other part is the day and night cycle. Uh, during the day, you scavenge for the supplies, you, you, you kind of overpower you, you have the advantage over zombies. Of course, they are still dangerous, but you, you have the advantage. And during the night, everything changes. The gameplay changes. The zombies get more aggressive. They get more intelligent. They chase you. They climb on top of things as well as you. So uh, you really have to step your game up to survive. And uh, is it very like narratively driven? Is it is it more of a story, or is it kind of an emergent players make their own story? Um, how does that work? Okay, so there's a story, a story that takes, I'd say, a dozen or maybe even more hours to complete, but. Uh, on the side of the, of the main story, we have lots of side quests that you can participate in. And also there's this system we call Dynamic Encounters System that uh, kind of takes from a pool of hundreds of events uh, based on your, on your level, on, of, of your health, of your condition. Uh, these are events that can play but don't have to play during your, your playthrough. So each playthrough is different because of that. So it is story driven, but there are lots of lots of opportunities for, for kind of emergent gameplay. Excellent. And is there, uh, how does the, the loot or the weapon system work? Um, do the weapons kind of drop or you find them in the, you know, the world? How does that work? Uh, we went for a realistic approach. So uh, there are lots of things in the environment that you can use as a weapon, say, uh, bias tools or pipes, etc. Uh, but the real weapons are kind of scarce and you really have to... Uh, like find them uh, and you really have keep a, uh, keep them close by and you really don't want to lose them because these are the most valuable things in our game and the game is melee based but you will get uh, firearms in our game but again it's realistic so uh, if a zombie apocalypse would happen in a place like this at PAX I think not many people would really have a gun so that's exactly what happens in our game when the zombie apocalypse came to Haran our fictional city where the game takes place not everyone has a gun but you can fight guns you can you, you can find find guns. You can find uh, find pistols, machine guns, assault guns, but uh, th 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 these guns are scarce. So does the 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 day and night cycle? Does that take place over? Um, I guess is. Does it transition to night based on your quest, or is it just always going? It's always, it's always cycling. Of course, it's, it, it is sped up. It's not like you have to play for 24 hours to like complete a day. Uh, but it's dynamic. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, it's not related to quests, so you can complete any quest you like during the day or during the night. Of course, during the night, it's more difficult, uh, but it's, uh, all, it's, it is more challenging. But we also try to reward you with extra XP, maybe extra money, maybe some extra events events that happen only during the night. So you've talked about XP and levels. Uh, how does that work? Is there some kind of like talent system or progression for uh, players? Uh, well, we don't talk much about the character progression system just yet, but uh, rest assured that there's an RPG element behind, like below the game, below the game pro gameplay mechanics, um, and uh, you level up during the game. When you start, all, there are four playable characters, and all the characters start at the same base level. But then, during your playthrough, you kind of pick the skills that you want to pick for your character. So when you end up with the build, I think it's, it, it, it's a fair chance that your build will be different than the build of your friends. Interesting. I noticed that uh, during my playthrough there was a zombie who was spitting bile at me uh, instead of just kind of the traditional zombie, which are very aggressive and uh, can definitely get a hold of you if you're not paying attention. But are there kind of special infected or uh, different variations of, of zombies? So we have like a dozen enemy types in our game and each of those types has uh, many variations. So we're talking a few dozen enemy types really uh, or uh, enemy variations in our game. The basic enemy is Biter. It's like a kind of slow enemy but uh, very dangerous because it tries to grab you and he really, when he sees you, he really d does everything he can to just grab you and bite you. Uh, and then we have infected. These are the um, enemies that chase you, and that's the, like the basic set. And then we have 
like I said, a dozen of special enemies, and the toad that you just that you've just seen is uh, just an, one of, one example of those special enemies. Interesting. All right. So, uh, what consoles are is the game coming to? What platforms? And then, when can players expect to play it? The game comes out in 2014 for PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. That's a laundry list of consoles. Thank you very much, Damon, for giving us a look at Dying Light. Thanks.